Hi, everyone. I am Ashley Jones, and welcome to this a software success lesson. Um, you guys know us here at Dime. We have lots of software to help you with your embroidery. And on our software success, which we have every month, the first and the third Tuesday, we talk all things software. So thank you for being here with me. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, tell me over there in the chat uh, where you're watching from, and we'll just say hello to everyone while we wait for everybody to join. So I'm glad to be here uh, with you guys. I just got back from a vacation. So it's nice to be back and kind of getting into a routine. Um, but it's always hard to kind of get started after vacation, right? So um, I see we have lots of familiar faces uh, um, joining with us today. And so hey, Laura from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. It's good to see you. Laura is always here with us. Appreciate your support. So Dee Dee says, where's the video? Hopefully, DD, it started playing by now. So I think that you were just early um, and it had not started. Um, the live broadcast had not started just yet. So thanks for being here. So, hey, Patricia from West Virginia. So good to see you. Maggie, uh, 81 from Wisconsin. Good to have you here with us. So, uh, George Ann Putman from Humble, Texas. Thanks for being here, George Ann. Good to see you. So, who else we got here? So from SoCal, Lori, thanks for being here. So hey, Jill, my friend from Tennessee, glad to have you here. Hi, Harriet Ann uh, Palmer. Good to see her um, today. She's actually normally in Florida, but she's coming to us from Fort Smith, Arkansas today. Thanks for being here, even though you are away. So uh, Dalu, thanks for being here from Chicago. Good to see you. Um, Great Falls, Monta Montana. Thanks for being here uh, with us. We've got Maine. Um, uh, Marie Calvert from Maine. Thank you for being here, uh, Marie. And uh, Bonnie Evans Abbott from Canada. Thanks for being here, Bonnie. We've got lots of states represented in Washington State. So one of my uh, favorite places that we've lived, love Washington State. So um, thank you, Julie. It's good to be back too. So, you know, vacation's always so much fun and relaxing, but it's definitely uh, sometimes good to be back, be in your own bed, but then just kind of get back into your own routine, right? So that's kind of how I feel. Um, and from Florida, thanks for being here, Connie. Um, Mary from Albuquerque. Thanks, uh, Marianne from Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Good to see everybody. So um, thanks for being here, uh, Marianne from Ohio. So good to see everybody. And then DD, thanks for being here from Las Vegas. Finally found you. I was early. I thought that might be the case, DD. So thank you for being here um, and being patient. So uh, while we get started and from Houston, Texas, Carolyn McPherson. So I see lots of other familiar names here. Linda Johnson. Thank you so much, Linda, for being here. Um, I appreciate all of your support and I get to see some of your fun creations. Laurie always uh, is great to share with us. So you guys know uh, Laurie, our um, part of our education team, Laurie Albrecht. So thanks for being here with us. And I see Reen and I see D Dawn from Creative Appliques. So thanks everybody for uh, being here. So today we are talking about um, quilt planning again but in a little bit different way. So we have a program that we collaborated with Amelie Scott Designs that is a plugin for our My Quilt Planner program. Now that's very important and I'm going to say it again and probably numerous times throughout this uh, demonstration is that the edge to edge plugin from Amelie Scott Designs is installed inside of my quilt planner and it's not like embroidery tool shed where you can have it separate because it's called a plug-in you must have my quilt planner to use the Amelie Scott edge to edge plug-in so it is currently the only plug-in program that we have here at Dime and that term plug-in uh, should signify um, or let you know, remind you or, or give you a clue that it does need another program. And in this case, it's the My Quilt Planner program that it does need to run. So it's our only program that's not standalone. You guys know that all of our programs are, are generally standalone, but this plug-in is not standalone. It does require My Quilt Planner uh, to work. And the reason is, is because it really is um, using the MyQuilt Planner platform, but 
what we are going to do today with the edge to edge plugin from Amelia Scott Designs is specific to her designs and to her techniques. So it is a uh, very particular um, on that. You can use it with other designs as well, but she has a specific way of doing her quilting and her spacing. And we've incorporated all of that into this plugin. So if you're an Amelia Scott fan, then it's a must have for sure. So, and I'm definitely loving uh, using this inside of my quilt planner. So just to uh, kind of give you a little more details, if you're unfamiliar um, with the edge to edge um, plugin in my quilt planner, we're going to be talking about the plugin. Now I'm using it inside of my quilt planner and I certainly can answer your questions about my quilt planner specifically, but the features I'm showing today are coming from the plugin aspect of my the edge to edge plugin. And it's specific to the Amelie Scott Designs technique planning and quilting. You can resize her design. So just recently she has converted all of her designs to our native format, the C2S format for our software, so that you can resize them to what you need to get it, uh, you know, the perfect sizing for your quilt top. And we're going to see more about that um, in just a bit. Her edge to edge pro technique, she has an edge to edge, uh, you know, quilting technique that she's done for years that we also uh, teach in conjunction with her, but the uh, Edge to Edge Pro technique, she has designed a way to calculate the design for an interior part of your quilt being different than the border because you need it to be a certain size to end right at those seams so that you can do a different design for your border. So this program is exactly what that does. And keep in mind, our quilt planner does something similar, but this particular plugin from Amelie Scott Design does use her techniques and her planning method. And just a reminder, like I said, I think I'll say this as many times as I can uh, remember to because I don't want it to be confused, the edge to edge plugin does require you to own my quilt planner. It is the only program at this time from Dime that does require another program to work. It is a plugin for that uh, my quilt planner. So just want to be clear on that. Now, if somebody out there is not familiar with our my quilt planner, there are a little bit of differences. You do gain some additional uh, features by adding the plugin to your my quilt planner. The my quilt planner um, will can. Um, allow you to create a quilt layout, which basically you're entering the information about your quilt. And then it'll allow you to create a quilting design layout so that you can quilt your quilt with your embroidery machine. So it's a planning tool, but it also will export the designs, the size and the format you need and print templates, which for quilting with your embroidery machine is really, really important for sure. So let's head over and see the plugin in action. So I'm going to flip over to my software and my uh, software here, I have it set up so that the My Quilt Planner is the, the tools that I have around the outside. So let me give you guys a little more detail on that if you're not sure what I'm uh, talking about. So in the shopping cart area here, um, you have a list of of software that we own that we have here from Dime. So everyone that has a check mark next to it, it has a uh, that means you have activated it and you own it. And so these are the two that we're using today: the Quilt Planner and the Edge to Edge. And I have made this the default. So when you click on this dot dot dot, now mine's already default, but you'll have an option to make it default. And that's my toolbar is set up so that it looks like this. So now you guys have heard me say before, you do not have to change your default, but I just wanted to 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 give you guys a little bit of detail if we have somebody new joining with us here today. So to use the Amelie Scott plugin, we now have a new icon here that says edge to edge quilting. And this icon opens up the quilt planning tool for the edge to edge plugin. And that little icon, as you can see, is the Amelie Scott logo because that is for the plugin. Now in your quilt planner, if you have that icon, but you don't own the quilt planner, when you click on it, it will um, 
tell you that you can purchase it if you want for um, to have that feature. OK, so when we click on it, it opens up our quilt layout. And I, this is really just as simple as answering these questions here in this pop up box. So you're going to tell the um, the size of your quilt body. So now notice this is a little bit different than the quilt planning tool from my quilt planner, because here we just need the measurements of your quilt body only. So I'm going to be using um, a quilt pattern layout from the free ebook that comes with the uh, quilt, the edge to edge plugin. And that's in her perfect pairing. So the size of the tulip and windmill quilt that you saw in my main image there is a 40 by 40. So I'm going to leave that 40 by 40 there. And it does have a border. So I'm going to click the width option. And you can see then it al that allows me to enter a border measurement. If you leave it on none, that means that you either don't have a border or you don't want a different design for the border. So I'm going to click width and we're going to enter a border and we're going to talk about what you get with these different options here. So the border width on the quilt that I am wanting to quilt is a four and a half inch border. And you do want to put in your finished measurements here. And then with the quilting design, this is where we're going to put the design that we want to do the quilting. So when you click on this box, you can see it turns to a hand and I can now click on it. It opens up my design library. So this design library are uh, all of the Amelie Scott designs that I have in my software. So this comes with the edge to edge plugin comes with the designs that you see here in my list. So the edge to edge bonus pack comes with all of these design collections um, and you can see each one has an A and a B. Um, and then we have each of these categories. So notice the difference here in these categories. As I click through them, you can see that each category has an A and a B body design. And it also has a border design and a cornerstone design. And notice the letters next to these because that'll actually mean something um, over here in our sequence view. So we've got the A and the B border design. We've got, or I'm sorry, the interior or the body design. And we've got the BR for the border design and the CS for the corner design. And you can see each one of these categories have this. Now you can use these designs without these border designs if you prefer, but I'm going to start with the border and then we'll uh, do one without as well. So I'm going to use the tulip and windmill. These designs were created and match the quilt design in the perfect pairing ebook that comes with this program. So I'm going to start by selecting the A design and click OK. And then I'm going to click on the B, choose the B design and click OK. And then click on the BR for my border design and choose the border option and click on the cornerstone design and click the cornerstone option. And notice it's very easy. The CS relates to the CS that was in this box before we clicked it um, and the BR so that you know exactly what to click. And if you do click one that's not a body design, it'll actually give you a message and say that that's not recommended for a body. Now, uh, something a little bit different here in the um, layout. Amelie Scott designs, edge to edge techniques recommend leaving a half space between the designs every time you rehoop to, to quilt a column. So she's automatically incorporated that in these spacing settings below. You can change them and we'll talk about that, but we're going to start with her presets. So the presets are the recommended settings that she recommends. So notice here too that she's got the quarter inch edge for the left and the right border and also the binding spacing here as well. So if you're entering those measurements for your finished measurements, you certainly can uh, reduce that down. And like I said, we'll make changes to these settings in a bit. But let's just click OK and see what we've got and talk about what we see on the screen. So now you can see it populated our entire quilt and each of these boxes with these letters are the 
designs for the interior of the quilt. So here you can see we've got an A design and a B design. And then every other column is going to be A and every other column is going to be B. Now these two here being A is because when we flip the quilt upside down um, and continue on, we'll leave off um, with this half and then flip it around and start with the second half. And I'll show you in the PDF. Now look at the border design. So each border design, you can see that it automatically rotates the design so that this shoe is in the right orientation. So isn't that cute? I love that. And so I also have my cornerstones automatically rotated out so that they are also already in the right orientation and it set those up for me. So when I save this quilt, I can save it as my C2S file, which is what I always recommend. So we're going to do file and save as, and we're going to choose a location. I'm just going to save it on my desktop for now. And we're going to call this our tulip quilt. And I'm going to save C2S first, and then we're going to save it to the format for our embroidery machine so that you can see what the difference is. So I'm going to call this our tulip quilt, and I'm going to click save. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to click the export quilt icon. The export quilt icon is going to export every one of these designs that I need to do my quilting individually. So I click on it. I'm going to again call this our tulip quilt. And this is actually going to create a folder. So I can even name it the same thing as my C2S file. And we're going to now choose the format for our embroidery machine. So now no matter which format you need for your embroidery machine, we save to something that will work for you. So we've got PES for brother and baby lock. We've got our, um, there's HUS, VIP, VP3, VP4 for FOF and Viking. We also have uh, PCS for, for FOF as well. We've got formats for um, Bernina, the EXP format for Bernina. We've got uh, commercial formats. We've got commercial format or formats for Singer and uh, Janome as well and Elna. So you can see our JEF here for Janome. So we do have a format no matter which brand of embroidery machine you, you have. So select that format and then click save. When you save it, it actually automatically opens up the page where it saves and take a look at what I get. Now, I got two body designs, an A and a B version, and I have one, two, three, four border designs because remember, it's the same design, but it's rotated the right orientation. So I don't accidentally forget to rotate it, but I do need to remember to load this design as I'm going to a separate border. And the same is true with my cornerstones. So notice that it saved all four of my cornerstones in the right orientation so that I just need to load the design and I know it's rotated the correct amount. Now, these designs, you can see them as images because of my Perfect Stitch Viewer. So remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about our Perfect Stitch Viewer program, which is an icon viewer. And so that's the, the reason I can see those as images. Yours might just be an icon if you don't have a viewer program uh, to display those. But every time you export a quilt, you also get a PDF file. And so let's open that file and see what's included. Now, this uh, file, you can see here, I've got some general information about the, uh, the design and the quilt layout and even the name that it was saved as well. And it shows my quilt layout here on the screen. And then the next page starts by letting you know where to start quilting. So this green dot around the column A or the uh, cell A1 is where... Amelie Scott Designs, Christine Connor, recommends you start quilting. So you're going to hoop that part of your quilt and you're going to position a template and then you'll be able to align your design perfectly and start your quilting. And we'll talk about printing the quilting, the template coming up here in just a bit. So you're going to start here in the A1. You're going to hoop and quilt by pressing the start button and it's going to quilt through all three layers of your quilt right here and then the a2 is going to be your next hooping so you will move your quilt um, in the hoop to that area and if you're using our snap hoop monster it makes it really easy to move and then on to a3 and a4 you're going to head back up to b1 
which means that you need to load the B version of your design. So open that design and then start quilting this B column. And then once you're done with this column, you'll open the A design and quilt this third column here. Once you've quilted that half, then you're going to flip the quilt, quilt around and the unquilted half will now be under the needle. And notice we're right back at that A1 position, but it is on the other side of our quilt. And you will quilt the A1 down to the A4 and then B1 down to the B3 and so forth and so on. And then head over and do your border designs. Now, each one of these designs is an individual hooping. You certainly could hoop more than one if you have a large area, but I have to say, believe it or not, it's just as easy to just hoop and position one, get it lined up, stitch it, and then just move your, your frame to the next position. So um, really easy. And those PDF files come every time you export the quilt. So if I just minimize this and head back into my software, the export quilt option here, that's what I clicked on to get each one of those designs saved individually and my PDF file that kind of is a roadmap to where I'm going to be starting and where I'm going to go after my start point. OK, so that's our first uh, um, layout here. So I'm going to go over to my sequence view, which is in the bottom right hand side. And I also want to point out that the names of each of these correspond to the name in the quilt. So remember our A design and our B design, our B or R is our border. The BR with the R90 means it was rotated for us 90 degrees. We were rotated 180 degrees for this design, 270 for this design along the bottom, so forth and so on. So that is uh, the sequence view. And you can see every time I click one, it selects that exact design file. OK, now let's uh, go in and talk about some changes that you can make. So I'm going to use the same quilt. So if I made a mistake or I want to make any changes, I can just simply click this icon to go back into the settings and then I can make these adjustments. But this is something I really want to point out about the second time you open the quilt layout by clicking this icon. So notice now that I actually have a, another set of options here. I did not have these options before. The computer automatically calculated how many columns and rows that I needed based on the design that I selected. Now, if I need to change these number of columns and rows, it's also going to change my design size for me. So let me close this out and show you what I mean. So if I click on any one of these designs, I can select it. OK, so I'm going to select the A body design and I'm going to go over here to my transform tab. And it says that this design is 6.67 by 9.37. The computer did all the work for me to calculate what size I needed in order for this design to end right at the border and also um, the height with my spacing to end um, before my border here so that I can do a different design. So that's what it's doing. But if you click on this and you do not have the uh, hoop size that's needed right here for this particular design, that's what the columns and the rows can actually help you with. So if I click back on my icon to head back in, I can change the number of columns and rows so that it does adjust the, the size of the design so that maybe I can use a smaller hoop if I don't have the, the original hoop that was suggested. So let's just play with this and see what we get. So I'm going to actually increase this number. So let's say we've got uh, seven columns. You can see that it made that adjustment for me and uh, five rows. And so they're actually almost uh, square here. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see now when I click on this design and I head over to my tab uh, transform, you can see that now my design is a 5.71 by 7.4. So that is a way that you can uh, adjust the design so that it is a different size 
and you can use a different size hoop if you need to. So this plugin does work slightly different um, than our My Quilt Planner. Uh, this being specific to Amelie Scott Designs Technique, they really have um, a, the control so that you make sure that you're able to use their technique for, for the quilting. So let's see if we have any questions before we go over um, another uh, couple of examples here. So let's see what uh, everybody is saying over here in the chat. So um, if you do have a question, um, I like here, uh, DD, thanks for putting the question marks in front of, because it definitely makes me easier to pick that out of the lineup. So she said, designs and machine board. Is there a way to import other designs we've purchased from Amelia Scott Designs? There actually is. So that's not through us. That's actually through Amelia Scott Designs. Um, designs that you've purchased in the past that maybe were just in machine file formats, they have since converted their designs all to the C2S format and they have an installer file for you so that you can just run that installer file and it will actually put the other designs that you've purchased into your library. So when you click that A to choose a design, your designs then will be in there. So contact Amelie Scott Designs. Um, they have all of those installer files for you that will automatically do that because you'll need to let them know um, which design packs that you own um, and they have all the details for how you'll need to do that. So so that's a really good question because it is really nice to have all of them in the um, uh, in the program. Makes it easier to locate, easier to find, easier to use. So, um, and Carolyn McPherson says, Emily Scott Designs thought of everything to make a computer for Yes, they do. Christine Connor, I think her background is in education. So she is very good at explaining on a very simplistic level so that anyone could accomplish these tasks. And I totally agree with the simplicity of this. It just takes any of the guesswork out of it. So, um, so I definitely agree. So, and then Marianne says, it's wonderful how easy uh, you can change the size of the block. So didn't realize that. So yes, I'm glad I was able to share that and teach you something, Marianne. So, and then Colleen Emmerich says, can you change the size first and have the program then choose the size of the template? Not in the plugin option. The plugin um, option for My Quilt Planner is design size centric, whereas the My Quilt Planner portion of this program is more block or hoop size related. But the designs that are created by Amelia Scott Designs, they have a particular way of resizing so that they're not distorted. So they're trying to prevent that. But then also you're getting the best quality uh, design. So they start with the design size. And in fact, I think I can show that when we go back over there um, a little more so that you kind of understand that. So the design size is really important to the technique, the um, edge to edge technique from Amelia Scott Designs. So their planning starts with design size. So hopefully that makes a little bit, um, a little bit of sense. So, and then Laura says, is the downloadable book, the perfect pairings from Dime or Amelia Scott Design? It's actually from Amelia Scott Designs. That's a really good question, Laura. The ebook that comes with the program is an Amelia Scott Designs ebook. And what it is, is it's actually, I think like six don't quote me on that. It may be five, <laughs> five different quilts. And actually I think it's six because I think they correspond to the, to the designs that are built in. But the, anyway, the quilts um, uh, instructions are in that e pairings. And there are also some applique designs that come with it as well. And then the quilting designs that are in the edge to edge, they pair perfectly with those quilt patterns that are in the ebook um, that, that you can create. So I thought that was very well thought out. Also, um, Christine always loves to give um, designs or quilt patterns so that you can then quilt them um, so she's basically thought of everything. So she gives you a quilt pattern. It does have some embroidery applique on there, which is even, uh, you know, a more of a bonus. And then with your edge to edge plugin, you'll have the matching designs in order to do the quilting. So, so that's what the perfect pairing books is all about. So, um, and then, uh, Dixie Baker says bonus pack designs included in the plugin. Yes. And so when you purchase the plugin, 
the designs that you saw in my list that I opened up, you get all of those designs automatically with the plugin purchase. If you have purchased past designs from Amelie Scott Designs that are not in the plugin, then you can contact Amelie Scott Designs to get an installer file so that you can put all of your files in that one place, which is... Um, uh, again, really, really handy. So for sure. And then uh, Marianne says, and Christine's husband is the techie and sets it all up for us. He definitely is. Mark is super technical and extremely uh, good at keeping all of this straight. So, and of course his uh, hand in designing this was uh, really important as well. So Colleen says, can you change the size? Okay. We did that already. So sorry, Colleen, I was backtracking there. We talked about changing the size. So, but that actually is a good time to go back over there and and Colleen was asking about changing the size first, but with the edge to edge plugin, you cannot change the design size first because the size that it is, is the size that it comes in and it works the, um, the quilt layout based on the size. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's head back over here and I'm going to leave my same quilt layout so we can really see the changes. And so if I go back in, um, originally this was uh, six by four. And so I'm going to put this back to what it was. OK, so and actually, let's just start over. I'm just going to start over. Let's do a new page. Let's start fresh. OK, so and this actually is a really good reminder because see how I don't have those options just yet, because it first decides for me the best uh, number of columns and rows. And but then I do have the option to go back and change them. But we had our 45, 40 quilt and then my uh, four and a half inch border. And then let me put these designs back in here and I'll show you what I mean about it adjusting based on the design size, not your block size, because this is edge to edge. So no matter which uh, block size, your design's really going to go all over it. Okay, so notice here that with this same design we were just talking about, which were, let me click on this again. So uh, the designs that come with the edge to edge plugin, you get this bonus expansion pack, which includes all of these uh, designs here, an A and a B version. But you also get one, two, three, four, five, six different packs that are the pro type, which means it gets an A and a B for the interior and you get a matching border and cornerstone. So when you see pro from Amelie Scott Designs, she means that you can use a border design that's different, whereas her original edge to edge method, you just quilted all the way to the edge of your quilt with the same design you didn't have a different border design, even if you had a border on your quilt. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now look at this. So this is the original design that we used from the uh, quilt um, settings that I did. And notice how this windmill design, it's a little um, wider then if I choose, say, this Sherbert, see how the Sherbert is a narrower design. So let's change our design. So I'm going to move this over. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six or six uh, columns by four rows. OK, so I'm going to choose a narrower design. I'm going to click the A. Notice this disappears. It disappears because it's starting to figure out, okay, what's the best layout for these designs that she's chosen? And I'm going to put my border designs in there and the corner design. And now look how many columns and rows that I have. I have the same number of rows, four, but I now have an extra column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Because the design that I started with was narrower, they do all of the math in this program so that your design is not distorted when it's doing the resizing. So you can see here now I have an extra column just because I chose a narrower design. Okay. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. And this is all, like I said, design size centric, but you don't necessarily have to remain with this type size we talked about. You can adjust these column numbers to manually force it to adjust it, but watch what happens. So it is a recommendation, but certainly you can customize this. So let's do, um, let's make our columns six like it was before. And I'm going to click okay. 
so that you can see what happens on the screen. So it just, when you click OK, it just takes a, a moment to generate. But you can see how this design is a little bit stretched wider, um, which is not bad. I actually still think it looks good, but I definitely like it better with the narrower columns. Okay. But hey, that's all personal preference. But let's take a look here. So while we're here, this is actually another really good example. So if I zoom in here, you've got one design that is a dark color. That is the one stitch file that I can select. But this one that's kind of grayed out, that's just a preview of what it's going to look like when you stitch it. But notice I have a gap here between my two border designs. Okay. So if I go back in to my quilt planning layout. You can see in my spacing here, I've got this border design option. So if I drop that down to zero, it turns red to let me know that that is not the default, but it still allows me to do it. And when I click OK, it actually adjusts the design size so that they now will touch. So now if I zoom in, you can see that now they are going to connect perfectly point to point. So that's what the spacing is all about. And if I go back in and we look at the other options here, you can actually change the spacing between the border designs as well. You can see that that just got narrower. So it's actually going to adjust the design size so that I only have a... Um, uh, a 0.2 instead of a 0.5, uh, a half inch um, between my designs. And you can also change here. You can see that um, the dashed line actually represents the full size of my quilt. So I have a quarter inch that's going to accommodate for my binding all the way around here. And you certainly can remove that as well. You see how that disappeared? But if you want your design to stop before your binding, then I definitely would leave that on. Or if you're doing a thicker binding or wider binding, you can increase that number there uh, um, as well. And the um, each edge left to right, if we increase that number uh, there, you can see that it, well, um, between the designs here, um, I think I had some changing. So you don't notice that as much. So, but the um, settings here, if they're not in red, they are the default of what Amelie Scott Designs recommends, but you certainly can make those adjustments if you want. So, and this was a quarter inch here as well. Okay. And I just wanted to point out that the design size did make a difference here in the number of columns uh, that I have. Now, let's say you don't have a border or you don't want to worry about quilting your border separately. If you have a border, but you just want to quilt from edge to edge, just leave this as none and treat it uh, like it was all just the interior of your quilt. Okay. And then all you're choosing is your interior designs here. And if I want to change them, I can click on it. And that would be a good example for these fun designs that uh, Christine has created. So this peacock design is absolutely gorgeous. And then when you click OK, you can see that it creates that layout for me. So it's really easy uh, to do and really easy to customize. Now let's talk about the difference in my saving method before we answer uh, any other questions. So I'm going to go file and open. And remember on my desktop, I saved the folder with all my individual designs in it. So that's what happens when I do an export quilt. I get all the designs separately. But whenever I save the C2S file, which is this one right here, I'm going to click open. And you can see that it remembered the layout of that original quilt that we planned. So if you are creating anything in any dime software, I would recommend always saving one copy as the C2S file. That C2S file is the native file format for our software. So it remembers things like, in this case, the quilt layout, but it also will remember stitch types and um, font types and all kinds of other things. So I always save that first, and then I save the, um, the file format that I need for my embroidery machine. So, okay. So one more thing that I want to point out here is about printing the template. Now to print a template, you do need to have the individual design on a workspace all by itself. If you click the print option 
from this page, it is attempting to print the entire quilt. So let's um, do in one page here so that we can see. And I'm going to scroll here down to the last uh, page here. Oh, there's a lot of them. I may never get there, but it has a, a layout. But you can see this is not what we need for our template. So that's the point that I was trying to make. But I was trying to get to that last page where it kind of looks like this. So to print a template actual size, there are two ways that you can uh, open up the correct file size. So you can copy this design from uh, this layout. So copy, open up a blank workspace and paste it. Now, if I click over here, you can see that it's 5.71 by 7.4. If we go over to our previous tab where we have our tulip design and I click on it and select 5.71 by 7.4. So it is the same design size that we planned. Okay, So I can now click my print icon and it is going to print an actual size template for me so that I can use this in my layout to uh, start my edge to edge quilting. OK, I love printing um, and having these crosshairs. It makes it easier if your crosshairs do not show up in any dime software. When you click the settings inside of the print preview, you have these options. Make sure crosshair is checked and make sure that actual size is checked. And you do want to have the stitches print or else it would be blank. So those are the three minimum things that you want to have selected to print your, your template from the software. And when you click OK, it is going to change those settings if it needs to. And then you'll click the print icon and it will ask you for your printer name, you know, that usual printing. Okay. So now I copied and pasted this. Another thing that you could do, remember our design files here that we saved. If I double click this file or I do file and open or file and merge and open that design, it's going to bring in the exact size of the design. So now this is not grouped. So you can see how when I click it, it'll select any part. So I need to select the entire design by clicking and dragging. And then over here in my settings, um, we've got our design size. Now this was the original one before we even made those changes <laughs> to our file. So we do have a different design size here. So just verify that when you are uh, saving your file. Make sure you save the very last version um, before you do that export because it's going to export the size that you've got in your layout, which is this right here. So we had done changes to our columns and that's what, what saved. Uh, I saved and then we did our changes to our columns and then I saved the C2S file. So that's why those are different. So hopefully that helps you with the planning on um, the My Quilt Planner plugin. So now uh, what's the reasons for the recommended space between the designs? So um, the recommended space between the designs to me, um, and Christine has said this before as well, is that it kind of gives you a fudge factor. It really sets you up for success because you don't have to be so perfect. You've got a little bit of wiggle room there. And so then whenever, if the designs were perfectly lined up top to bottom as well with no linking point and you didn't get it spot on, then it might be uh, a little bit too long to go right over your border or too short. So she likes that spacing because it just sets you up for success, for success, but you certainly don't need it. If you have been quilting and not putting the space between uh, those two, then you certainly don't have to. I will have to say I tested and did this after we started with this plugin and I actually kind of liked that extra space and I had never really played with it before. I'd always just put them right next to each other. So, um, and then uh, we've got a question from Dina. So Dina says, do you do the new design from Amelia Scott designs in the future? Will they go into quilt designs without having to make any other changes? So when you purchase any design from Amelia Scott designs from now on, then Mark has created that installer that you will get and be able to install these inside the plugin with each page pack that you uh, purchase this this point forward. So yeah, really good question. And then they'll all be in that library that you can just select from. It just makes it really easy to find for sure. So, and then how do you get the ebook installed on your computer? So the ebook, if I remember correctly, 
Don't quote me on this, um, but certainly you can reach out to our customer service or either Amelie Scott Designs customer service. But the e book that's called Perfect Pairings that comes with this program. It is a um, a dot pub file, so it opens up in like a pubs reader. And Amelie Scott Designs has amazing directions on how to use that and also um, a the pub reader that would work there. It's just a free program that you can read it inside. It just makes it more book-like. And so I think this one was also a pub file. So you download and then you on um, that pub file whenever you get it, and then you can open it up in a pub reader. And again, if you check with our customer service or either Amelie Scott Designs customer service, they'll be able to give you uh, more details on that. That's a really good example, but it is um, completely separate file, whereas all the other ones are already installed inside of the uh, program. So all of the sets that you saw in mine, you don't have to do anything separate when you install your, your plugin. They're already in there as well. So, And then Laura Parks said is the downloadable book for the e pairings from Dime or Amelie Scott. Oh, we answered that. I'm going backtracking. I'm losing my mind here. We answered that. It is an Amelie Scott uh, design book as well. So let's see what other questions we have. Um, and then Elaine Kelly says, are you going to show how to see the designs in my quilt using a photo? So, okay. So if you want to import an image of your quilt, you would use the feature file and load backdrop and then select the photo of your quilt and put that, uh, um, it would be behind your design so you can see what it looks like. So in um, the next software success, which is the 7th of May, I will be showing how to use a photo of your quilt. And then I will also um, be talking about things that are not, full quilt. So like table runners, smaller projects as well, which um, we have some more things we can do to have a, some control over our, our design. So make sure you come back on May the 7th and we'll talk more about that. But in the meantime, if you want to play file and load backdrop, we'll uh, bring in that quilt. So, um, and I did that one already for Dina. I need to mark these. So, cause I'm going out of, um, out of order here. So let me just see if we've got any other uh, questions here. And so, oh, thank you, Linda. Linda says uh, that I'm a great teacher. Thank you so much, Linda. I really appreciate that comment. So very nice of you to say. So, and then uh, um, how do you use the installer? So an installer is the easiest thing ever. Programmers generally will create an installer so that all you do is click on it and then it runs. You may have to say, okay, or yes, it's okay for it to run. But when you run an installer program, it basically is doing everything in the background for you. So you don't have to. So usually an installer, you just double click on it and you say, OK, to use or, or yes, do those settings. And then it just does everything for you. Again, the instructions. Mark is really good from Ailey Scott Designs. He has all the instructions on those installers as well. So um, I was just looking through to see if I um, see any other questions questions. And I think we're good. If I miss something, put it down below and I'll try to look before we are um, all set. So, okay. So the uh, last uh, things that I want to mention here is that as a reminder, I can't say this enough. The Amelie Scott Edge to Edge plugin only works if you own my quilt planner software from Dime. It is currently our only program that does require some other program to run. So it's a plugin. So that means it's not standalone. So I just can't say that enough. And in case we have people join late, I just wanted to uh, mention that. And we talked about my quilt planner already. So in uh, the next software success, which is on May the 7th, um, I'll see you guys back here at 1 p.m. Central. And I'm going to do a part two of this program because I do feel like there's just much more uh, that we can do with it, like the question about designing on top of an image. So I'll share that with you, but I'll also be doing uh, smaller projects as well, because I really love quilting table runners with my embroidery machine. So I'm going to show you a smaller project as well, and just give you some other tips and uh, tricks along the way. So if you have more questions, bring them, um, and I'll be happy to answer them. So now with the edge to edge plugin,
if you have already purchased it from us, or if you are going to purchase it, it comes with the Perfect Pairings ebook. This is the um, ebook that we were just referring to. The example I was using for my quilt size was the uh, windmills and tulips from this book. And it is a set of patterns that Christine Connor of Amelia Scott Design has created for you that has matching applique designs for those quilt designs that come inside of the software. The e pairings ebook is a separate file, it does not show up inside of your software. But now it also comes with six new design sets. These are already inside of the um, Edge to Edge plugin program. You don't have to do anything separate. And each one of these has an A and a B design as well as a corner and a border design. That's what uh, we mean by sets. But you also get an exclusive expansion pack with the purchase of the Edge to Edge plugin or if you've already purchased it. And those were the designs you saw me using that did not have the matching corner and border. It's the A and the B uh, designs. But you can mix and match. Now, you don't have to stick with the uh, matching, you know, design. If they're, if you look like it goes, you know, well for you, you can certainly mix and match those designs as well. But if you have already purchased, you should have all of these things. And if you are purchasing from this point forward, these are the things that come with the purchase of the Amelie Scott Edge to Edge plugin for My Quilt Planner. If you do not own it and you are interested in purchasing it, remember you must own My Quilt Planner. So if you don't already have My Quilt Planner, you will need to buy Quilt Planner and the plugin. But if you already own My Quilt Planner, then all you need to purchase is the Edge to Edge plugin. So so it is on our site for $99.99, but I cannot also say this enough, support your local dealer. So if you have a local store that you love to shop at, um, go to them and talk to them about this dime program from Amelie Scott uh, uh, in collaboration with Amelie Scott Designs. They will most likely be able to give you an even better deal. So make sure that you are um, checking with your local dealer. It's always really nice to support local. So, okay. So that's all that I have for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, presentation and I will see you. Let me flip back to my side slide there. I accidentally went away from it. Um, I will see you then on uh, May the 7th for another episode of Software Success, talking about Edge to Edge plugin from Amelie Scott Design Part 2. So we'll see you guys uh, then, and thank you so much for being here.